Greetings and salutations all you folks out there, back with another Heroes of the Storm cast. This time I'm taking Lili. I'm going to try to uh, show you guys how support classes work. I'm sure you already know if you played anything like League of Legends or Dota, but I had a lot of fun with this one. This is actually my second game that I ever played with Lili, and uh, I think it went quite well. So hopefully you'll agree and maybe we can all learn something from this. Yeah. I like going back and analyzing what happened in these because it just helps me see a little bit better what I could have done. Now, Lily, um, let me figure out my numbering here. Gotta get uh, those. There we go. I think I am on this now. All right, there's Lily. Um, I'm still getting used to the controls on the replay, so you'll have to forgive me if I stumble just a teensy little bit. Lily has some really diverse upgrades. She can take the upgrades that expand on her healing capabilities, she can take upgrades that expand on stacking damage with her blinding wind, which attacks multiple opponents, or she can boost other players' um, damage with the snake, the cloud serpent. And uh, this basically attaches a I don't know. It looks like a flying leech to me, but I guess it is the Cloud Serpent. And that attacks enemies nearby, whoever it's attached to, for a few seconds. It is eight seconds. Uh, but you can boost that to last about half again as long and deal more damage and cast more than one serpent, etc, etc. So in this one, I took Increase Brew Range, which I like because it means you can heal people from very far away. And with Lily, your goal is to keep everyone else alive as long as you possibly can at the sacrifice of your own damage. So you're basically going to cast heal as often as you possibly can on the person with the lowest health. And you can actually negate their need to go back to the Mana Fountain. Um, and... This right here, I don't think he was entirely paying attention. I would have had him healed to about 75% in another couple of hits. But uh, you got to watch when there's a support character nearby you and make sure that you're not uh, you're not wasting your trip to the fountain at, because they're already healing you. So I took the increased range over uh, increased serpent duration and increased mana regeneration because I want to make a melee character more survivable. You want to basically attach yourself to an assassin and follow them as closely as you can and keep them in good health so they can kill lots and lots of people. You're creating more damage by letting them live longer. And we'll take a look at the stats at the end of this game so you can see how that works out. So basically right here, I'm just tagging back and forth between these two guys, healing them, and laying down a little bit of extra damage with my serpent and everything else. And I'm just going to run with them. You don't want to stay by yourself. Lily does not have either the health or the damage to really do anything by herself. You just kind of leech off of the most powerful nearby character and just keep him alive. Here I actually attach the Cloud Serpent to that person. He's going to be up close and personal anyway, so he'll be in the perfect position to use that leech to its maximum effectiveness and just going to keep letting him wail away. Now you can see I'm not really doing much damage at all. Not a bit, but I made him survivable enough that he was able to live versus two opponents, kill one, and nearly kill the other. So that is your goal in this. Second upgrade, gonna take Blinding Wind hits more targets. Originally it hits two, now it hits four. And it's, uh, just to read it off, it blinds the four nearest enemies, targets miss their next two basic attacks, and it deals 108 damage. And that's to four characters, which is really good. Later on, you get a stacking boost ability for that, and it works out brilliantly. So right now, I'm mounting up, going to try to catch up to someone that I can lend a helping hand to, but unfortunately, my mana is running extremely low right now, barely making it out to 100. Thankfully, the heal ability only costs 30 mana, so you can keep pushing that out even when you're desperately low. But after this push, I'm going to have to retreat because I just don't have enough mana left to sustain anymore. It's not going to work out. So Diablo and uh, whatever this guy's name is, Arthras, I think, cannot recall, are uh, that was enabling them to push through these 
fortifications here. I'm going to try to nail down Mace, but I don't think that's going to happen. No trying to cast Blinding, but it did not have the slow effect attached to it like I thought I did. But uh, these guys are going to tag him out anyway, and I am going to recall with the Hearthstone because I desperately need some more mana. There right, we go. Filling up quite nicely. Up here in the top right, we've got a single assassin trying to face off versus a triple push with mercenaries. That is a dangerous combination right here. This is the kind of thing that bulldozes whole sections of the plane. I'm going to try to run in, but uh, realizing that no one else is there, I'm going to go ahead and pull back. Because I know, with Lily, you don't ever want to get caught out by yourself. She's very fast, and she actually has a 10% movement speed boost when, um, when you're taking damage from other people. So she's very good at getting away from things. She just only has, I mean, you see, I've got 1,900 health compared to upwards of 2K for most of the other players at this point. So just not able to take many hits. All right, healing up, alternating between healing myself and healing my teammate here. I'm gonna have to pull back because I'm well below half health there. Lay on a couple of heals, back into the action. Getting two kills there, I think. Yes, and trying to snag the third. What struck me as odd I had not played support class much before I played this game and I'm trying to tag with this guy towards the end of the game because I realized that this is the person doing the most damage seems to know how to play the best. That's another thing. You got to figure out who is doing the most damage and compliment them because you exponentially increase the amount that they're capable of doing. Um, it, it's odd. I did not expect it out of the support class that two people plus a healer is actually more effective than three heroes by themselves unless it's a triple assassin combination because then they're just doing so much damage at once that it's ridiculous but if you can alternate your heals on that it actually works out really well uh, three versus three one team having the healer will usually win I picked up a couple more upgrades just to go over these. Um, we've got additional healing, an extra 80 health over the next 6 seconds. Um, so that adds uh, a good bit on top of the initial heal that I normally do. And that is picking it over, um, costing less mana for repeated uses. And the reduction of stun and root by 75%. I don't really wish to make myself more survivable, my goal is to make my team more survivable. And then picking up the heroic, I'm gonna get the uh, jug of a thousand cups, that's basically maximum overload healing. It makes the people standing right next to you very nearly unkillable for six or eight seconds. Let's see, six seconds, yes. So that's just going to create a ludicrous amount of healing. Uh, if you plant yourself firmly in the middle of the group of your other four players and lay that heroic down, you can pretty much wipe the slate clean of any enemy characters without much trouble. And here, laying down the heals on Diablo, just trying to rack up enough HP to escape. We did manage to get out despite the trap and the heroic laid down there. But uh, yeah, so you can see right here, we're still running. I think this is on autopilot, and I very nearly healed him back up. No need to go back to the fountain now. It's going to detour up and head around there. Tag along, tag along. That is basically all I am. Right now, we're up a level, and we've been doing a really good job of capturing and keeping the fort. Up here on the north side, we've got one hero down. Almost two heroes down. I'm trying to get the heal, but knocked quite going to get there in time there's an enemy that was a good trade and two versus one here now yes the assassin has got it so that was a nice little cleanup there i i missed that heal should have tried to get there a little bit quicker should have left to go where the action was but uh despite losing that one friendly there we did manage to clean up so it is definitely not a loss Got Assassin and Diablo. What is this guy's name? I cannot recall. Um, 
these guys are going to lock down the North Temple. And then we got Tychus thinking about the Southern Temple, but not really going for it. I don't know if it's because he doesn't have any support or if he saw something coming. I was not down here looking, but he is just kind of ignoring it. It does not exist as far as he's concerned. And there comes our lovely purple lady. Gonna pull a total denial there. We got two to three people on the bottom side and that is going to be the end of that push. Back up here looking at me, trying to keep these guys healthy. They are laying down an incredible amount of damage. One of the enemies got stuck in the middle of the dog pile. That's not where you wanna be. When I first started playing this game, I thought Diablo's, um, where he grabs someone and flips them behind his head. I thought that was one of the stupidest moves I've ever seen. But then I realized that uh, if you have a gate, which is impassable for the opposite team members, um, you can reach across the gate and grab someone and flip them onto your side of the gate into the middle of four turrets in your entire team and basically get an instantaneous kill without any problems whatsoever. And then also, if you have a group of people and somebody's running away, you can... Uh, go from running away and not uh, in any danger to right in the middle of a pack of four enemies and dying very quickly. All right, there's the healing jug. You can see how quickly that racks up the heal. He went from half to full health just about instantaneously. He is ready to rumble in that thing now, trying to get the kill out there, but he's just not quite going to have the range for it, giving up, going for the minions. Got some assistance coming in. Maybe we'll be able to break this. I don't recall what exactly happened at this point. I'm just going to soak damage. Heal myself, take damage from the tower. Doesn't matter who's soaking the damage. I can heal myself as long as I'm tanking for the team. But that's all I want to do is I want to negate damage as much as I possibly can. I know that's a recurring theme, but that's what you got to do with these guys. Picked up a couple more upgrades too. Gain ability power. This is the stacking that I talked about earlier. Man, just barely got out of that trap running from the heroic. Tychus is not very brave, I found out that game. He tends to turn and run. I don't think he understood the concept of, hey man, I can double your health over a very short period of time. Maybe you should stick around and fight a little. And just by the hair of my chinny chin chin running out of that one. And I'm going to make it out. Good dealio. Going to mount up and widen the gap. That is what you want to do. Trying to deny some mercenaries up in the top. Diablo laying down that area damage he's so good at. The assassin and the tank taking out the enemy right there. And then moving to the mercenaries, no problemo. Gonna kill off that push without much effort at all. And then I'm gonna tag along with him. Like I was saying earlier, he's the one that's uh, usually doing the most damage. So if I stick around with him, I'll be able to get a piece of the action. All right, so back to this. Gain 5% ability power for eight seconds for every enemy hit by blinding wind. Additional enemies hit refresh the duration of this buff and further increase ability power stacks up to four times. And that makes this really, really strong. Um, you can stack, keep stacking this and just deal ludicrous amounts of damage to groups of enemies. And you'll also notice that Lily, after she gets an upgrade on her Blinding Wind, she not only casts Blinding Wind, but she does like an area sweep with her staff. That right there that does a really good amount of damage. So you can run right into the middle of a group, lay that down, and then run away. Basically, you're blinding everyone for your teammates who are actually going to stick around and carry out the fight. You're proximity fighting through everybody else. There's a neat kill, nicely executed. Uh, going to just trap a person right in the middle of three and then demolish them. Running away, healing as I run, trying to keep these guys alive, winging the outside edge, heal. Heal, and that's going to be a survival, but I don't know that Diablo is going to be so lucky. He kind of got himself in the middle of a mess there. I wasn't able to get back up there in time. All right, the next upgrade that I picked up was Healing Brew removes, um, disables, and gives movement speed, which basically lets your teammate escape from situations that they normally wouldn't. It works out really well when you're in hairy situations. Um, I might go for this one instead if I'd had it unlocked, but like I said, this is only, I think, my second or third game with this character. I think it was my second, so I am not, 
I have not achieved maximum potential. And on the last one, choosing doubling my healing capacity with the heroic. Which, like I said, basically makes you and your friends as a group nigh on unkillable for the next six seconds, which can be brutal if used in the middle of a large fight. Going to move back up towards the north, just taking a look at the south. We basically collapsed onto our last three um, barricades up here. But all of these are relatively intact except for the north one. Um, this is good except for one tower. That is not so great, but most of us are in the north lane, so this is well protected. We're going to retreat up here and grab this temple. One other thing that I had to get used to on this game is spamming move orders. You see that I click, 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 click a lot, and I do realize that I can basically just drag my right pointer around, but I'm trying to build a good habit because in... Uh, Heroes of the Storm, you cannot attack and move at the same time. So what you want to do is you want to build up a habit of right-clicking everywhere you go no matter what because that allows you to um, move and right-click. You can see the timing with the attacks here. You want to run and attack within your cooldown so that you can travel and attack at the same time. And that requires a lot of clicking. Add to that your abilities and you're in for pretty high APM requirements. Especially with a character like Lili who has really super short cooldown times on pretty much everything. You can see here I'm recalling because I saw that the um, home was in danger. Tychus recalled as well is going to use his heroic and I'm going to tag right along next to him. Keep healing that literal tank and just bumping his health up, bumping his health up keeping him alive so he can deal as much damage as he possibly can casting the heroic going to keep him topped off to the max full health bar when you got Lili next to you you can basically just wade through whatever you want to wade through on your heroic and you're gonna win and uh, there's not much that the enemy team can do about that that is just a brutal combination Diablo coming in for the cleanup kill we are now three levels up top and just demolishing this. Their last tower has gone down. They are wide open. We've got our minions most of the way across on these lanes. This is the only exception. We still have a couple of our towers intact. So I think we can clean this up in another push or two and we will be through with this. Assassin just about got himself killed there. He is going to run. Ring around the rosy, you can't catch me. The invisibility is amazing on that character. Alright, we're gonna pick up a boss. This seems like a good plan. We're almost ready to kill everything. I can see a push coming up in the middle here. These guys are gonna run past and try to get in through the open lane. And again, here's... I'm basically turning Diablo into a tank. He is not technically a tank. He does have very high HP and he's very survivable, but he's not technically a tank. And uh, Lili, with the healing ability, can turn him into one. Because you just exponentially increase his health over a course of time because you keep laying down the heals and stacking them up. I'm going to try to dispatch this player, but it is not quite going to work out. Diablo is going to get trapped. I get a little blocked up. And the boss is just going to carry on with his rampage, ignoring everything that he is trampling over and just pushing straight for the core because there's no other buildings left. And I keep running around trying to deal as much damage as I can. I'm going to lay down the heroic to heal everything. That's going to keep me alive directly and also top off Diablo's tank so he's able to jump back into the fight. Shields down on the core. Lili still laying the heels down on Diablo. Diablo using his ability to just throw astronomical amounts of damage in that general direction. That fire breath is awesome. I do love it. That's one of the, my favorite abilities that he has. And 33% health on this. Heal. Heal for your life, Lili. Trying to keep these guys alive. And there it goes. Just barely getting out of a death right there. So that is Lili. Hopefully that's a good example of what she's capable of. I readily admit that I'm not the best support class player, 
that is probably my fifth or sixth game as a support class. And like I said, my second or third one as Lily. So I'm not super familiar with it. But uh, that was a good one. Do we not get the statistic screen off of replays? That saddens me greatly. Oh well. As far as the st uh, statistics go, if I remember correctly, I only dealt about 22k in hero damage, but I healed about 23k. So, and a lot of those directly saved characters that were about to die or helped win fights. So, you know, you can kind of flip around. Um, Lily is directly responsible for a lot of the damage that her team brings to bear because she keeps the more powerful players in the fight longer, which is the end goal. And in laying so much healing down in the little bit of grinding that I was able to do um, with the minions and doing everything else, Lily actually racked up the highest experience point count by far. If, I, if memory serves me correctly, it was like 32,000 experience points and the second highest player was 28 and a half, I think. So, Lily is definitely no slacker. And that actually kind of surprised me for some raccoon looking little uh, girly character. She definitely pulls her own weight, so I would not shy away from playing her again. Alrighty, that is going to wrap up this game. Hopefully you enjoyed it with me. And I've already had somebody send me a Heroes of the Storm cast. I will cast it, not immediately. I'm still getting comfortable, familiar with the controls. You can see I stumbled a couple of times, and I've got to do a couple of test runs um, using the full field of view on the map and trying to get used to manipulating the camera a little bit, and then I'll try to dive into one of those. My plan is, when I come back from getting married, that's roughly a month-ish away from now, um, is, is when I'll be coming back. I'm planning on diving headlong into this game and casting games, starting to turn out tutorials, uh, character evaluation, strategies, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of content coming for this, but just not right this second. I'm still feeling out how to use this game. All right, that's enough out of me. I'm going to quit rambling here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next cast. Make sure to tune in Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern United States time for the Forged Alliance live cast. Don't miss it. See you there.